Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and retirement worth having. I'm seated here working vigorously on my work, which is scripting and other things, doing things for my ministry that I've just relaunched, because COVID is loosening. People in America are not paying as much attention to COVID. It is not true that people like me and people who like me understand that we have a right to choose how we protect our bodies and, our, and ourselves from the indiscretions of men like those who just visited me. A man just visited me with his interactive clothing, I might call it, his athletic clothing, obviously on a holiday of some kind, perhaps on his way somewhere, but openly what he wanted to do for me was to provide me a little cash. And he did ask my permission as if he had been listening to me. And he simply said, may I? And the Lord at first said no because when God tells me things I usually get it a good five minutes ahead of time before someone even gets to me and unfortunately that's me that is my life and he's always accurate the Lord most high of all the land and all the earth knows exactly who is and isn't a part of his house and his work my predilection to say no is my right because people like to use financial abuse in a way that's unique. They like to call people on my behalf and say, would you do this for him? And people might say yes and they might say no. At the same time, many companies and universities will test a man or a woman who works for their staff. And what they will do is they will send out a looker, a real attractive woman. And that happened today. A very attractive woman drove up in a white Jeep with four doors and she sat for quite a time in the Dollar Tree parking lot, but she never got out of the car. And as far as I knew, based on the fact that men like me and other men in the world notice things like this when they're not fully engaged in their work, she did not go into the store. So maybe she just needed to pull over and make a phone call and not be driving her car while she was making a phone call. Or maybe she changed her mind about going to the store. There's, of course, all those options when you're thinking from a divergent thinking condition. Divergent thinking versus dialogic thinking is very different. Dialogic thinking means you think in a linear fashion and you can only do one thing at a time. Divergent thinking is one of those things that you need for multitasking. So if I'm multitasking doing my work and God says look up, I look up. If God doesn't says ignore it, it's not something to worry about, I don't worry about it. You see, all of us have the indication and the predilection and the orientation to the Holy Ghost, but so many people who claim to be of faith do not want to listen to those soft, quiet voices that are put in our hearts, in our minds, and around our souls to protect us from the monsters of the world. A monster in the world might have set people up to interact with someone for his own scientific study, but the truth is because the pattern is so regular and so defined, it doesn't actually produce anything in the results except what the researcher wants to find. Someone might say that I'm a failure at this time in my life, and I might possibly agree. On the other hand, I might look at my life and look at the constant obstacles put in my life by people that are totally strangers to me and say, you know what, I'm just in survival mode. And I remain in survival mode because people who are strangers and not a part of my marvelous life are interfering with my rights to do things for me. I have several siblings that want to constantly insult my abilities in life by saying things like, you can figure this out, and I'm like, I never fucking asked you for one bit of advice. Stop talking at me like I'm 12. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and I am a man of over 50. I've had a long life working for corporations as a corporate communications person in manufacturing, wearing multiple hats on behalf of my executives that were both American, Canadian, and Japanese. And I should say all three as opposed to both. I apologize for my misuse of grammar. But the reality is I've also worked a mighty long time as an independent contractor for a man who just couldn't get his shit together and made a mess out of what it was promised to me that I finally just left and openly mailed the camera back. It was about the time that we were switching over from film to digital. And openly the film versions of doing things were a lot better than the digital camera that was proposed to utilize. But what the guy decided to do was instead of hire a professional photographer like me, was to just allow the people and those companies to take the photographs. Great for him, more money for him, 
but a lie in terms of his beliefs on partnership. Now I can continue to talk about my life and I can continue to give out details of my life, but I don't have to give out my details of my life to anyone. I have made a simple sign that I put on my rollator card. You see, when men in the force decided to monkey with my help, and women female contractors of a nursing group refused to follow through on delivering of a prescription to me that I've delivered to my life, pretty much all my life, in terms of a hormonal imbalance, what I can tell you is that they did not deliver it correctly at all. And I believe they didn't deliver it to me at all. You see, they lied for three months' time, and then they got off on wanting to know whether or not it was delivered to me. Not that it mattered to those sheriffs because they're not medical practitioners. And literally, they were monsters to even know one thing about my health at all. Now, as I continue to tell my story and I continue to relate and report the truth and the facts of situations that I've endured since one marvelous girl thought she'd call police on my life and then my siblings decided to do the same to monkey my life with litigation abuse and financial abuse, I have to say... I'm underimpressed with American society today. First of all, we have a lot of people who are now shopping at the Dollar Tree, and they are practically elderly. So what I wonder is if someone from that company started listening to me and started marketing to them, which I'm glad. But here's what I'm pissed off at. Put a fucking bench outside the store and make a sign on it that says, this is for our elderly guests, not you, little boy, little girl, panhandling on the block. Now, I am presently, at this present moment, watching some marvelous elderly women stand waiting for their vehicle that takes them back to their independent, quasi-independent living facility. So, I also know there's a young man in his 20s inside helping people to go shopping and helping people to feel fine. And I'm glad for that. I've also witnessed elderly women being very, very socially appropriate in terms of their safeguarding of their shopping. And I'm glad for that. But what I'd like to tell them sometimes is, Despite what I look like, despite what I smell like, despite the fact that I'm homeless, I'm the least person in the world for them to worry about. Now, in life, we have moments of time to tell the truth. And what we have in America is a bunch of people that don't belong here. But what I mean by that is we have men who are American, women who are American, and a hell of a lot of foreign citizens who are here as students that like to play in the shadows. And for all I know that the man approached me today to try to give me some money, of which I said, no way. And he persisted a little bit further, and the Lord said, you may receive it. And so I eventually did by saying what I always say, I'm humbled to receive it. Now, how many panhandlers on the street that have been illegally taking advantage of my video channel and tracks are going to start saying that to people is curious at best. But what I can say is that he openly went out of his way to give me another $3, which surprised me, but God said, go ahead and receive it. He's really in the heart and mind and soul of a person of God. And then he went off apparently, fairly quickly, and bought a gift certificate, supposedly, for me, or he had it in his pocket, maybe from one of his friends, with allegedly $20 on it, but maybe it didn't have that on it. You see, we're always trusting that retail employee to do something, and the mistake I heard in his description of what he said was that he told them that the card was for someone who was struggling and homeless. At that point, he failed himself. Because you see, the worst thing he can do is presume to allow that person to think that I'm going to keep that vehicle or that card and I'm not going to give it to someone else who needs it more than me. And that could monkey them. At the same time, it might make a player who's a teenager or a bitch on wheels who doesn't get this and doesn't believe in homelessness and thinks she's above it might just simply pretend to put money on it and the minute he leaves, take the money off it. At the same time, he could have gone into autumn, ordered him his family a marvelous meal, and they could have driven off, and he could have come back to me and given it to me. There's a lot of players in American communities that think they like to play. At the same time, because of some of his slips of tongue, I could tell that some of the report and story on his life were not quite fully right. You see, an incredible listener, a very detailed learner, and a person who knows precisely what they posted in terms of their online profiles, and the fact that I just talked about making a note about one of the fast food restaurants with regard to ergonomics, I can tell you that that man was possibly a psychologist, possibly a business psychiatrist or psychologist, possibly an ergonomicist, if that's the right word, 
of what he alluded to say, but what he told me is what a lot of law enforcement officers say. I'm in construction. So, what do we believe? There's a consistent pattern of indiscrepancies, or there's a consistent pattern of particular profiles and professions and professionals who like to help people like me. He did make the note to continue to read the sign that I have placed on my card to get people to stop abusing me with their time and with their lies, and it has helped me a great deal to get out the riffraff that want to play in the shadows of my life.